All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about inverse trig functions because it's a topic that has confused me for years. But first, let's talk about the topic that seems unrelated, but is actually related to this, namely logarithms. So for instance, let's try to find log base two of eight. Well, log base two of eight answers the question, two to the what? equals eight. In other words, what power do you have to raise two to to get eight? Well, the answer is two to the third. So log base two of eight is three. So again, very important. Remember this question, two to the what equals eight? Because it turns out it's the same thing for inverse trig functions. For instance, what is arc sine of x? Well, it's the angle whose sine is x. In other words, it answers the question, sine of what equals x? Just like here, two to the what equals eight, here's sine of what equals x. So now let's do a couple of examples. And let's use our trig circle, because it comes in very handy here. Very nice. So for instance, let's try to find arc sine of one. Again, it answers the question, sine of what equals one? In other words, which angle gives you an output of one? And well, remember for the trig circle, sine is the y coordinate. So notice the only point here whose sine is one is pi over two, which is 90 degrees. So arc sine of, sorry, so sine of pi over two equals one, so arc sine of one is pi over two. Again, it's the angle whose sine is one. Okay, let's do another example. What about arc sine? Let's try to find arc sine of one half. Again, it answers the question, sine of what equals one half? Well, Let's see, well, which point has altitude one half? Well, this one, and notice it corresponds to a very small angle, so it should be pi over six. So, which is you know, 30 degrees. So sine of pi over six equals one half. So the answer is pi over six. Again, the angle whose sine is one half is pi over six. But you might be like, wait a moment. What about five pi over six? What about this angle? I agree, it does give you one half, but basically in those arc sine, arc cosine problems, you just pick the easiest angle that works. And in particular here, uh, for arc sine, in case you're interested, you need your angle to be between minus pi over two and pi over two, because this is just an easy way to go from minus one to one. It has to do with one to one functions, but I don't want to get into that because it's already a confusing topic. So always think the easiest angle whose sine is a certain value. All right, how about we do the same spiel for cosine? Again, let's do another trig circle. So how about arc cosine? Let's see of, um, I don't wanna do zero, but let's do arc cosine of minus one. Well, again, let's find the angle whose cosine is minus one. Again, the easiest angle with this property well, again, for cosine, you need to look at the x coordinate. So it is pi. So again, cosine of pi is minus one. So our cosine of one, cosine of pi is minus one. So our cosine, you basically flip it, uh, which gives you pi. Or for instance, again, let's do, um, so arc cosine, of square root of three over two. Well, again, it's the 
angle whose cosine is a square root of three over two, again, which is very close to one. So again, in this case, again, it has to be pi over six. Because again, you're asking yourself the question, cosine of what? It's square root of three over two. So the answer is pi over six. And now again, technically, you also have the choice of minus pi over six. Because it also gives you the cosine of of you know, three square root of three over two. But again, in this example, you always pick the easiest angle that gives you the answer. So here, if you had the choice between pi over six and minus pi over six, you would pick pi over six because it's much easier. And again, strictly speaking for cosine, because you want it to go between minus one and one, the angle has to be between zero and pi. Again, if you're curious about the various ranges, right? And again, same thing for uh, arc tangent, arc uh, secant, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just for the sake of it, let's find arc cosecant of two. Let's figure out what that is. So again, you want to ask yourself cosecant of what equals two? And remember, cosecant is one over sine. So one over sine of what equals two? So sine of what equals one half? And again, I don't know if I already did this, but look at the trig circle. So one half, it's a pretty small angle, which again, I don't know, all my answers are pi over six today, but question mark is pi over six. So arc cosecant of two is pi over six. Now, here's one important thing that I haven't talked about, but it's important to realize. In all those things, the answer is an angle. So it's very important. And again, let me write this down. Okay. The input of arc cosine and arc sine, not quite for the other ones, is a number between minus one and one, and the output is an angle. So if you ever write in your calculator arc cosine of pi, it would probably give you an error. And that's because, again, the input of arc cosine and arc sine has to be a number between minus one and one. So that's why you're probably mistaking it for cosine. So it's very important. And uh, another thing is do not confuse arc sine of x with one over sine of x. Those are not the same things. This is, again, the angle whose output is x, and this is just one over you know, sine of x. Last but not least, sometimes you have to um, simplify some inverse trig functions. And in particular, let me show you a little bit about the triangle method. So let's do cosine. Let's simplify the following. Let's see. Cosine of arc sine of 1 7. Now, it doesn't make sense to find arc sine of one seventh explicitly because it's basically impossible to find. Yet, the cool thing is you can still find cosine of arc sine by using what's called the triangle method. So, arc sine of one seventh, again, it answers the question sine of what equals one seventh. Now, Remember what sine is. Abracadabra socatoa, it's opposite over the hypotenuse. So essentially what you have to do here, you have to draw me an easy triangle whose sine is one seventh. Kind of like here, wonderful. And Again, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So in order for opposite over hypotenuse to be one seventh, 
just let the opposite side be one and the hypotenuse be seven. And now remember what you have to find. You have to find cosine of arc sine of one seventh, but arc sine of one seventh is precisely this question mark that you have to find. So really all you have to find is cosine of this question mark. So the point is once we're done, once we find cosine of this, but that's not very hard to find because remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So since we know the hypotenuse is seven, you just need to find adjacent, but adjacent, you just use it by the Pythagorean theorem because adjacent squared plus opposite squared equals hypotenuse squared. So adjacent squared becomes, so seven squared, that's 49 minus one, which is 48, which tells you that adjacent is square root of 48. Which you can simplify, but we don't need to do that. So again, you get square root of 48. And I'm telling you, we're basically done because, again, let me recap. Our goal was to find cosine of arc sine of one seventh. So to so find arc sine of one seventh, you ask yourself sine of what equals one seventh? And well, for this, use that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So um, sine of this weird angle is one over seven. Now, the goal was to find cosine of arc sine of one seventh. So precisely just cosine of this question mark. Now, cosine of question mark is adjacent over hypotenuse. And in order to find the adjacent side, you just use the Pythagorean theorem. To find adjacent is square root of 48. And last but not least, you can just fill this out. Cosine of arc sine of 1 7 is cosine of question mark, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. But now hypotenuse is square root of 48, adjacent is sorry, adjacent is square root of 48, hypotenuse is seven, and then you're done. That is cosine of arc sine of one seven. So that's what's called the triangle method, which is very useful in trickier problems. All right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.